do 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 boop 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 do 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 Oh my, it's live from Tacoma, Washington. It's a live stream. What's up, everybody? How you doing? It's Monday. Wow. It's Monday, and it's been wild, you guys. It's been wild. It's been a wild time. It's been a wild week. <sighs> Gotta stay on the coffee, you know what I'm talking about. What's up, everybody? Uh, let's say first to the chat, Nisi of the North, thank you very much for coming in. It's been a while since I've seen you. It's been a while since we've talked. How you doing, Nisi? You doing all right? Things going well? Up in the North? Happy to say that Papa Bill, that is now... Grandpa Bill is headed down from the north, so let's just call that serendipitous, right? <laughs> Grandpa Bill's headed down here, and the reason I say that, uh, I want to give a big shout-out to everybody that uh, said congratulations. Thank you very much. We very much appreciate the outpouring of all the, the kind words and everybody that was... Uh, so gracious to say congratulations on our baby girl. Our baby daughter has entered the world, and now my life has changed. My life has changed, and it's much smaller in here, Mr. Chips. What you doing, Mr. Chips? Mr. Chips, I have to admit, the one person's life that has changed a lot in this household it has to be Mr. Chips. He is like I have to say he's the, his reaction to uh us bringing a ba our baby home. It's been quite interesting. He feels like he feels like now he's a third child. He's just he's just a third child and he's he's just going to be the the fifth wheel from here on out. But don't worry Mr. Chips, you're still our buddy, our best good friend. Our best good friend, Mr. Chips. We love him. Don't worry about him. He's still going to be great. But he is a little bit intrigued by the baby. Uh, another person that's intrigued by the baby is yours truly. This guy right here. Very much like... <laughs> kind of losing it. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how many uh, ultrasounds and... You know, laser technology doctor nonsense that they bring in... Nothing quite, nothing quite like being there for the birth. And I have to say, if I was wearing a hat, oh, hold on, here we go. I actually have a hat here. I got my welding hat here. You guys know, I got my sweet welding hat and my big, thick, dead eyebrows. Uh, you know, hats off to my lady Victoria, who, what a trooper, what a gangster. What a what a what a woman, what a lady. My gosh. Twenty four hours of labor. <laughs> Man. Uh a solid twenty four hours of labor. I don't uh makes no sense whatsoever. Somebody's calling me. Who's calling me? Who is it? Could it be baby related? Oh, Victoria, you're on the show. I'm on the show. Hey, sweetie bear. Did I win something? You won a baby. <gasps> Yay! Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe. Are you anything, on? Huh? Anything special for dinner? Anything special for dinner? Yeah, like 
Mexican food or Italian food or oh, you, you got me all excited for Greek the other day. Maybe we should do that Greek thing. You got it. I will try and find something for Greek food, and I'll grab you a latte in a little bit. I love it. All right. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for calling in. <laughs> Love you, babe. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, okay. bye. Okay, bye. All right. Uh, grandma and Vicky Toria, uh, my mother, grandma. My mom's now grandma, you guys. You have to understand. My grandmother, uh, so, or my mother, so excited to be a grandma. They brought another house to our house. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my mom is my mother is currently living on site. Uh, you know you can't ask for much help, more help than somebody who decides they're just gonna live on site to help out if you need help, and um, that's huge. Uh, as you guys know, I titled this spawning. Uh, we have spawned here, and as you guys know, in the United States, there ain't much as far as paternity leave. Um, so I'm going to be back to work. Well, I'm already working, but um, I'm going to be back to, to uh, doing work as much as I can. As you guys know, I took Friday off because uh, I didn't sleep for like three days. So, um, you know, I did get some, get some sleep at the hospital. I slept on a... Uh, I don't even know what that thing is. It's like a, a World War II relic, you know, of a bed. Slept on that, and uh, it's like a, one of those foldy contraptions made out of steel. And then, um, you know, slept on that thing, which was nuts. And then uh, got our new baby. But uh, Grandma and Mom, or and Mama, Vicky, they are out. Uh, they went to go get the baby checked up, and. You know, some people would say it's a little bit weird that I would send grandma on that uh, doctor's appointment. But the way I look at it is that, so we got Vicky and we got myself, who are two uh, geriatric parents as far as the uh, the doctors are concerned and stuff. Yes, we're geriatric first-time parents. Uh, but the way I look at it is that we both sort of have the same experience so far. My mother, on the other hand, happens to be somebody who spent uh, 45 years working in the hospital. Um, so I would say that she's bringing some other experience. Plus, she raised babies <laughs> to full grown, right? So she's done the full spawning deal. So uh, I wanted her to go to. Um, I wanted her to go check out with the doctor and, and, and be there and have, uh, both, both opinions and stuff. And they can let me know what happened. So, uh, I had some work here that needed to get done. So I got some of that done. Obviously I'm doing the, the work of the show. Hello. We're going to do some Patreon questions here shortly. Um, and, uh, so I figured them going would be a double whammy of goodness. And then tomorrow I'm, I'm headed off to some appointments with, um, uh, with Vicky and the baby, you know, we're going to be doing that stuff over, over this week, blah, 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 blah. Enough talk about myself. Let's talk about our lovely baby girl. A lot of people are super intrigued as to what her name is. Cause I've been pretty vague about that. Um, and <laughs> those of you that know, on uh, the, I did a short live stream, uh, about, uh, about our daughter being born, that it was successful and she was super healthy. Um, she came out at eight pounds, three ounces. So pretty much right on the mark, you know, that's what you're looking for. Eight pounds, right? Um, if I, if I'd pulled an eight pounder out of the river, I'd be pretty happy with that. Right. Um, so eight pounds, three ounces born at 420. <laughs> I hope by the time she's an adult, maybe the 420 thing will have gone away. But then again, I, I don't even, most people don't even know when they were born. I think I was born at 6 a.m. or so. I, I don't know. I don't even know what time I was born. So uh, I'm sure it won't ever really reflect on anything to do with her. Um, so born at 420, she was 19 and a half inches long, I believe. I think that that's right. I mean, they try to measure a squirming baby. I mean, come on now. They're like, got a tape out there. Like, oh, yeah, it looks about right. Uh, 
you know, if that was construction, <laughs> a lot of people would have been upset because that wouldn't have been, you know, accurate measurement. It's all right. Um, totally healthy. Little head of hair <laughs> on her. Um, little head of hair on her. And um, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, she's got a little cone head right now. Uh, and she, her head kind of will come back to uh, the right shape. And, you know, I'm sorry to say... To all the other parents out there in the world, I'm sorry to say that I have the most beautiful daughter, the most beautiful child you've ever seen. Sorry. Sorry. It's just... It's just reality, my man. My man. It's just reality uh, that we have the most beautiful baby you've ever, you've ever freaking seen, right? Ever? I think ever, right, Mr. Chips? You're chewing your feet. Put you on your feet, buddy. I'm a. I got to take the dogs in to get their nails clipped. I'm too freaked out to clip their nails. Uh, I hate doing that. I end up cutting the quick. If you guys know what the quick is, it's that part inside, and that's like the nerve ending of the dog's nails. And I, I don't like doing that. Um, so we take them in. It only it costs like fifteen bucks. <laughs> I'm like that's way worth it than the than the stress, you know. So stop chewing your feet. But uh, anyhow, uh, we had the most beautiful daughter. I'm super happy, and uh, we're totally stoked. And she's a pretty chill kid, man. I'm t I'll tell you that. Uh, she's pretty chill as far as um, babies go so far. You know, I know we're only a couple days in. We'll see how it goes. Maybe she'll get crazy when her teeth come in. Uh, but so far, she actually is a pretty chill baby. Uh, and um, we just couldn't be any happier, uh, honestly. You know, I, I'm... You know, we had our fingers crossed. Turns out it worked. We got a ha happy, healthy baby, and uh, I'm, I'm stoked. You know, doing baby outfits, doing all the good stuff, and uh, you know, changing diapers, doing the things that I'm supposed to do because I'm a dad, geriatric dad. Get that right. You know, got to be grandpa dad up in here. Uh, that's what, uh, that's what people call me. You know what I mean? They call me grandpa dad. You know what I mean. <laughs> oh, Candy. Candy posted a link, um, which is a good point. I want to remind you guys uh, that this whole show is not only brought to you by the patronizers. It also is brought to you in part by the Aquarium Co-op. Candy Overhaul just posted the link that takes you over to the co-op. Uh, right now, they have a huge sale on all of the co-op branded stuff. Now, that means like shirts and hats and all that nonsense, which is great. But I think the biggest thing with this is uh, easy green, easy iron, the easy carb, like all of the all of the fertilizers and stuff. That stuff's on sale. It's like 20 percent off. So it's um, it's BF. So for best friend. Oh, no. What is it? I got to I got to make sure I get the right code here, bros. Um, let me see what the code is. Let me see what I had it pulled up, but I was trying to edit you guys some, some videos. Um, oh yeah, it was. Okay. So I had it right in my head, but I didn't want to say it and type it in and then freak people out. Uh, coop 20. So best friend BF coop 20. Um, uh, that's 20% off that stuff. I would 100% take advantage of it. If, um, if if you get a chance, you can definitely get some great deals over this uh, this month here. Corey was super cool to like stretch out the sales and stuff so that people aren't losing their minds or their complete entire wallet. You know, I hey, I do this all the time. I go onto like Amazon and I'm like, oh, add that into the cart, add that into the cart. And then all of a sudden I look at it and I'm like, how is the what? How is it this much money? And I'm like, I can't do this. Put it all back, <laughs> you know. Um, so he kind of spaced it out so that so that people's needs could be met um, with the stuff that you specifically need and it needed, uh, and you could make decisions throughout the month on the stuff that you want. So that's what this week is. Check that out if you like. If you don't, you don't have to. And uh, yeah. But uh, if you do go there, be sure to click through the affiliate link, and it just lets them know that I sent you. Um, and uh, I, I don't know 
I do get a little bit of a I do get a little bit of a percentage to help support the show, and that's how uh, one of the big things that the that the uh, aquarium co-op does to help support the show here. So, uh, but let's not forget about the patronizers because the patronizers are you know the oceaneers as we like to call them are the the beating heart of. Uh, of uh, being able for me being able to keep doing the YouTube stuff, uh, you know, spent spent a lot of time staring at my baby and 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 really just kind of thinking about all the great things that are going on um, in my life. A lot of the hard work that's gone into it. Um, I I got to have a a great conversation with my buddy yesterday, who has. Um, <laughs> I will tell you, you know, back in the day. You know, as you guys know, I've been sober almost. Uh, I'm coming up on five years. Uh, if I if I uh, keep up on it, I'll have been sober five years pretty soon. So let's just call it four and a half years right now. Uh, but I've been sober for four and a half years and just kind of backtracking with a guy who, um, you know, I I was the guy who was the witness on his marriage, um, his marriage stuff. In a you know, so I've known this guy for a really long time, a really good, very close friend of mine. Um, had him over yesterday, watched the Seahawks lose again to the Rams, which that's frustrating in its own right. But um, let's look at the silver lining here. Got to have a great conversation with a good buddy of mine. Uh, you got to check out and say hi to Olivia. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys her name. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, you got to meet the baby and... Um, pretty crazy but we were talking about just the timeline of both of our lives just how how far we've both come um you know he's doing so many awesome things with his life that he always wanted to do i'm also doing the exact same thing and just taking just just taking inventory of things that are coming along and um the oceaneers and everybody on patreon and stuff like that have been a huge contributing factor to that i i there's no way that i could um, there's no way that I could just sit here and go like, yeah, I've done everything myself. I'm just a, I'm just a one man band here. Um, I've got a lot of people on my, on my gratitude list and, and everybody at the, um, uh, everybody on the, uh, on the Patreon, all the oceaneers, as we like to call them, uh, uh, are huge contributors to that. Uh, it's a, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, uh, I, I hope that we get to keep going in, in the forward the forward direction. I think that's ultimately the plan and that's one of those things that um, that's one of the things that we're gonna keep doing. I think I've inspired a little bit of NFL talk in here. Um, I know we all we all want our teams to win. you know there can only be one there can only be one. I just hope that we get to see the Rams again in the playoffs and get our victory then, right? Maybe that's the maybe that's maybe that's the kismet. Maybe we'll be like the uh, what was it, two thousand eight Giants, whatever year that was that they were like eight and eight and then won the Super Bowl. <laughs> maybe we'll be able to do that, right? Um, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, Barbara Jackson says, so was Corey right? Has your whole life changed? Uh, no, I, I, it's kind of one of the funny things is that everyone's like, you're going to lose sleep. You're going to lose this. You're going to lose that. There's going to be so many things. And, uh, you know, Vicky knows me really well, obviously being my partner. Um, and, and she's like, you know, cause I get up and I start working, you know, I get up and I work and I work and I work and I work until it's time to go to sleep. And normally I don't even go to sleep. So it's really like, Vicky is the one that motivates me to go to bed and stuff like that. And, um, I'll, I'll just keep working on stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so it really is just like, you know, one of those instances, but, um, I don't even know why I was I even talking about that. Um, but yeah, my life really hasn't changed cause it's just work and work and work. And, um, I, I mean, it's definitely changed because I, I definitely am looking forward to the, um, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the partner in crime that I'll be able to have my kid, right? Like I know everybody thinks it's ridiculous when I when I do my beep beep boop 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 at the beginning of the show, 
But I'm just hoping that I'll have like uh, a super fan, you know, like daughter that will just be like, my dad's weird, but I love that guy. So that's going to be pretty cool. That'll be a change. <laughs> I'll be adding somebody that hopefully will have unconditional love for my weirdness. And, uh, you know, I just do my best to, to fulfill um, my expectations and my obligations and all the things that I can hopefully do. You know what I mean? Just do the best I can, right? Um, we got some super chats here I got to grab before we go to the Patreon questions. Uh, oh, and uh, if anybody's wondering... Victoria's name, er, uh, not Victoria's name. <laughs> our baby, uh, our baby's name is Olivia Jean, and um, I know a lot of people have been hanging around. Know that the name Olivia has been bouncing around with all of the kind of options that we were thinking about, and we both realized like that is probably the best first name for her, and uh, we definitely wanted to pay homage to some of the important people um in our families that uh I, I definitely in in my family um you know and jean her middle name is uh, after my grandmother who is the was the matriarch of the family definitely um definitely one of the the biggest contributors to to my childhood and my life and all that stuff um and uh yeah so, and we definitely settled on that and it just made sense when we were at the hospital. I didn't, you know, people were asking us ahead of time and we had some ideas for a name. Um, and you know, we had ideas and stuff and then we were just kind of like, we're just going to figure it out when we're at the hospital because it will make the most sense there. We'll just, we'll, ha we'll have to make a decision. Right. And it's just like, we'll just put the pressure on the line. We'll think about stuff and we'll have some options, but we'll just wait until, you know, it's, it's decision time, you know? And so that's what we did. And, and uh, we're both ex extremely happy, and I, you know, I just think it's it's great. Um, let's see here. Um, Corey Jackson said, uh, "Who is it? Somebody was saying uh, Justin Woody. I picked up both aquascaping books from Aquarium Coop because of your last episode. Yeah, I highly recommend it. I I literally don't even put this thing back up on the shelf. I li I leave it over here on my really." overpriced uh audio equipment which probably overheated or something at some point but um i i love the aquascaping guides um you know it's great to know um it, it's great to know chris at this point you know it's kind of crazy to be like it's kind of crazy to like be at the point now where i'm actually friends with people that are you know that i look up to you know it was kind of crazy like I don't want to say who it was, but somebody who's like super famous in fish keeping world. Um, and I'll probably be doing a collaboration with them as I think they're going to sponsor um, uh, one of the projects that's coming up. And obviously, I don't want to spoil it, you know, ahead of time or anything. But, um, you know, like, dude knew who I was, like, on a first name basis. <laughs> like, how do you know my name? <laughs> it's like, man, I watch your channel. Like what <laughs> you know um so that that kind of stuff is kind of crazy and i don't know why i'm talking about that now i guess maybe my life has changed because my brain is just off the tracks uh yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. that's the reason i was talking about it um because chris luca it's kind of crazy to actually know him now and we just talk all the time uh obviously he's in germany so we have to message each other but that's pretty weird right i think it's weird to, like, actually know people that I look up to, you know, at this point. You know, which is awesome. Like, I went to Tom Barr's house. How weird is that? I got to message him back, by the way, because he messaged me the other day, and I didn't. Sometimes I'm terrible. Uh, Lucy and Richard with the $20 Super Chat said, Congratulations on your growing family. Much loves from our fish house to yours. As always, doing water changes while listening to you. Keep on trucking. I like that. There's a lot of people that seem to do water changes while listening to this show. And uh, so you're not alone. You're not alone. Uh, the only problem is I had to do mine before the show today. So I, I got a big 
some big parts of maintenance done that I needed to get done today. Um, and then it was like, you know what? I, I got to do a Monday live stream and just uh, say hi to you guys and answer the Patreon questions. Because, you know, there's no there's no paternity leave here. There's no paternity leave on the Internet. <laughs> if you work on the Internet. <laughs> if you work on the YouTube. I guess Peter McKinnon and Casey Neistat get paternity leave, though. Hmm. Not too shabby, right? Ginger Graves, the $20 super chat, which is crazy big super chats, you guys. That's, hey, you don't have to go nuts. You don't have to go nuts. Uh, I try to read the chat anyhow. It's going by pretty quick today. Uh, but Ginger Graves with a $20 super chat said, congratulations to you and Vicky and baby girl and Mr. Chips and the new grandparents. And don't forget about Beatty Brown and the other grandparents. And boy, howdy. It's an exciting time. I think it's a pretty exciting time. I'm excited. And thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Brian's Fish Tanks with a 999 Super Chat said, uh, had to log out at the beginning. Did you say the baby's name? <laughs> Here's some diaper money. Uh, happy for you, bud. Well, thanks, Brian. Um, I have to say, if you guys don't know who Brian is, I, I we did a tour of his fish room, and I, I posted a video up. You guys can go uh, in the fish room tour playlist. You guys can find it in there. Uh, Brian's an awesome dude. He has a great YouTube channel, too. Uh, definitely check him out if you can. Um, he is uh, uh, he's I forget the name of his. Um, uh, he does just he, he does like he has like fish food and stuff like that. I can't remember the name of it. I kind of just jumped out at me. I wish I would. Can't remember the name. Aquatic support systems. There we go. Um, it, you know, you guys can order uh, certain foods and stuff like that that you might not be able to find. Like Brian is the guy that can hook that up. And especially if you're looking for some really cool stuff uh, out there. <laughs> Who's this Isaac Clark idiot? <laughs> oh man, it's always with the. It's always with the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man oh. oh that dude's next level <laughs> what a ding bad I mean I get it like maybe you're super excited about the president or something like that I, yeah, I personally am not what the I gotta find out what's going on here baby what are you doing That's how good my show goes. People knocking at the door. They'd be like, oh man, it's it's like Veterans Day. There's no mail today. It turns out somebody sent something to Vicky. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> I was not expecting that. Normally happens during the show, but I wasn't expecting it today. Any hoozle. Um, where was I at? Oh yeah, I had that that guy who was loving the loving El Presidente. Ah, oh, bye-bye, buddy. Yep, have a good day. Have a good life. Love you. Love you very much. Um, let's see. Savannah the Aqua Llama. I only got into football this last year. I'm more of a hockey person. Still learning. It's a good way to spend time with my dad, though. Yes. Hey, if you don't like football, I get it. I fully understand it. Uh, you know, I was a kid that loved watching football games because of my family. Um... And never really got into football until kind of later in life. So about 1999 or whatever is when um, 
really kind of started watching football and stuff like that and really just kind of getting into the ins and outs of the game. I never did play or anything like that. I played soccer uh, to a really high level and stuff when I was a kid, but um, I, you know, I never played football or anything, but I really find it to be an enjoyable game. Once you kind of know the rules and kind of know all the ins and outs and things that are going on, it becomes quite enjoyable um, to definitely watch, watch the game. You know, I think it's why it's so popular, but you know, who knows? Uh, Jeff Rose fish keeping says he's talking about me. <laughs> well, you know it. Um, Chad Kratz with the nine 99 super chat says, welcome to the world. Olivia Jean. Well, thank you very much. Um, as, as mentioned earlier in a super chat I, from Brian, I bet that's just going into the diaper fund at this point. So, um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, uh, M Howie nine with a $5 super chat. Congrats, man. How's the baby sleeping? Uh, she's been sleeping pretty good. Honestly. Um, she was very hungry. So she definitely is the kind of baby that, that wakes up and starts moving around when it's time to eat. So that's kind of her MO at this point is sort of just eat and sleep and eat and sleep and, you know, amongst other, you know, poop things and stuff like that. So, um, she eats pretty well. Um, and you know, I do my best to, you know, Vicky just lets me know and I get up and, you know, change her diaper and stuff like that. So she's doing pretty well. I can't, can't complain at all. She's beautiful for sure. Uh, Sunia is here with a $10 super chat saying congratulations on your beautiful little baby girl. She's so cute and tiny. <laughs> she is. Uh, I'm pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much, uh, just, you know, I'm hung up on her. She's the best. Um, James Neesham says, what position on the field did you play? Uh, I played center mid and um, oftentimes filled in for striker. Uh, basically, was a forward a lot of times. Uh, but I was almost always in a float position because we played a 4-4-2, um, a which is four defenders, four midfielders, and two uh, forwards. And um, I was generally the guy who would float between midfield and uh and the strikers basically that's how i played um and uh yeah so i was always kind of just floating around doing what needed doing what needed doing do some dirty work um let's see here candy oh palmer aquatics is here what's up my man uh says it's a sick painting you're a beast i don't know if i'm a beast but you know you know what i'm saying uh, thank you very much. This thing is for sale. Somebody's going to buy this someday, and, you know, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh to my heart's content that that will be up on somebody's wall. I mean, I laugh at it that it's up on up in here. <laughs> you know what I mean. Mr. B's Fishing Things is here. What's up, my man? Good to see you. Uh, -ba 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 -ba. Okay, I think we're caught up. With the chat and whatnot, so let's get over to... Is it scene five? Aha! Scene five is what is the right one. And uh, then I gotta change my... Gotta change... Gotta move this. Then I gotta move this so that I'm over here. Oh man, who's got the cursor over here? It's me. <laughs> Yay! Uh, Nathaniel John throwing down. Saying, sorry off topic... But here's a picture of my three-year-old Rebecca meeting her new baby sister, Clara. Hope everyone else is having a wonderful day. Um, I don't know that it's off topic. You were ahead. You are ahead of the curve on November 2nd. Uh, that's definitely on topic. It's topical. It's definitely topical for sure. Um, loving it. Thanks for, um, thanks for throwing this in. And honestly, uh, I, I, I love to see this. Uh, it's just awesome. I mean, realistically, we should probably just turn the Patreon into, like, post pictures of your baby. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Let's just let's go crazy. This looks like it was in the hospital, though, because this is this looks like the hospital crib. So this is a newborn, newborn, newborn. Yep, and he's got the, the tag on his wrist. Learning, right? You can't. You can't make off with that baby. You can't be stealing that baby or the alarms will go off. Um, so I love seeing this. That was awesome. And I, I don't know about this view at the hospital that you had there. I, I would say that the view that Vicky and I had um, at our hospital situation, the birthing, was next level. I mean, 
up in the sky looking over Tacoma. It's pretty, pretty cool looking over the bay. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Uh, Dave's Plantification throwing down a picture of his shrimp saying, Hey, everyone, here are my first shrimp ever purchased at the Aquatic Experience 2018. Thank you, Flip Aquatics. Oh, yeah, man. If you haven't gotten any shrimp from Rob, I would definitely, uh, I would definitely, you know, recommend. That's a good all American brand right there. If you happen to be in America, you could get some Flip Aquatics. And if you haven't seen, Flip Aquatics YouTube channel. You've probably been living in a cave. So I don't know. But I would definitely go check it out if you haven't. Uh, Flip. L F L I P Aquatics. Boom. It Which was told to me that this actually stands for fish, live plants, inver er, fish, live invertebrates, and plants. That's what it is. The flip. Which was a shocker to me. What, that was that was completely way over my head the whole entire time. I didn't even know. <laughs> and you got me, buddy. Uh, but Dave, with a follow-up here, was asking some questions about CO2, pH, and KH calculation. Uh, vacuuming the substrate uh, planted aquarium. Hey, all. I'm trying to better understand the measurement of CO2 content in the aquarium using the formula CO2 equals... Three times KH, uh, 10 over the power of 7 minus pH, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's a, the formula is right here. You guys can look that up if you like, uh, which I highly, would, I highly recommend anybody to go do that. Um, what I would recommend, I will post in the comment right here. You guys seen me do it live on the show. Um, I would go check out the Planet Tank Forum. There's a really long breakdown there that you're able to go through and read how to calculate things if you are doing tests versus KH versus GH and what's going on um, with your water and figuring out what's going on. I could I could explain it, but I don't want to screw it up. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm a little bit mushy-brained right now, and I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, you got to do this and you got to do that. And then and then people are like, man, I read on, I heard on your show, and now my thing's all screwed up. And to be brutally honest with you guys, at this point in time, I, I do almost everything by, I, I do minimal testing. I, I test for KH and GH and stuff and pH and see what's going on. But um, most everything is just sort of by feel, like I kind of know what's going on. Um, like, oh, blackbeard algae is showing up. This is what I got to do. Um, and I've definitely simplified a lot of my... Um, a lot of my aquascaping techniques and stuff like that. That's definitely one of those things that um, with... The use of like the Fluval lights that has seriously sped up um, and made ease of use for my planet aquariums. Like it really has made it a lot easier to navigate things that are going on. Um, you know, I can change the light spectrum from my phone. You know, I can just use the app from my phone. You know, I can bump up the red or bring the blue down or bring the white up, that kind of stuff, and, and change the light spectrum a little bit. Um, <clears throat> You know, CO2, uh, L Flower One Star says CO2 costs too much. Uh, the initial setup is a little bit of money. Um, but if you're somebody like me, you definitely want to go look around on Craigslist, uh, Facebook Marketplace, stuff like that. You can find used systems for quite, uh, you know, quite affordably. Um, you know, one of the things you'd want to look in is probably, um, you know, aquaponic setups, uh, hydroponic setups, things like that. If you're not finding anything in the aquarium trade, uh, but by the way, also look into, um, you know, reef postings, people that are breaking down saltwater aquariums and stuff like that often have a CO2 system that runs in, uh, for their calcium reactor. So I, I would bear that in mind that, you know, you're kind of just looking for aquarium equipment and stuff like that. You can find them really, really cheaply. Uh, matter of fact, I got a new solenoid and um, CO2 bottle the other day for free because I, help, I helped a guy break down some of his equipment. And uh, so, I mean, I'll be gifting that to somebody. It's I'm not going to, like, sell it or anything. But, um, But yeah, the initial the, the initial setup can be fairly costly if you're uh, looking into stuff. But um, a, a good way to go is to find some used 
use things. Uh, sometimes people are moving to a whole new area and they can't take things with them and stuff like that. Um, and refilling the tanks actually is quite affordable. I re refilled all of my tanks the other day and it was $70. So I picked up, I think, hmm, what did I pick up? 55 pounds. I picked up 55 pounds of CO2 <laughs> and uh, it was $72. So, and that lasts me a really long time, even with my big tanks. Uh, it does last quite a while. So, uh, it does become quite affordable, especially compared to the liquid stuff. Like if you're using Seachem, man, you're, you're going to be poor after a little while if you're trying to carbon dose, which um, is generally what inspires people to even move over to a CO2 system for sure. Uh, elf flower stars don't think low light plants need co2 um, no plants need co2 and just by the same by the exact same um, argument that humans don't need good nutrition yeah I mean you could eat at McDonald's every day um, but I don't think you'd be a very healthy person you know you need to eat a varied diet that um, you know, allows you, you know, you know, humans need to eat a varied diet. Plants need to have easier access to growing themselves healthy. And uh, CO2 is one of those things. Carbon is the building block. Um, they're grabbing that carbon molecule and essentially using it to build the structure of the plant. So if you have CO2 available to plants when they're photosynthesizing, you're going to grow really healthy plants, generally speaking. Uh, <clears throat> obviously having the right, um, you know, having the correct nutrients and minerals and fertilizer and stuff like that for your plants, um, is important. Um, it's the same thing for people, you know, you have to have the right minerals and stuff like that to grow a, a good, strong human, right? So, you know, you could eat garbage food all the time. You could, you could have your plants kind of eating garbage food all the time. Uh, but it's essentially what it boils down to is you just kind of end up with a, either a, a fairly unhealthy person and fairly unhealthy plants. So whether it's low light or high light, whatever, they're all going to be using carbon in order to grow. So that is, you know, you, you know you're not necessarily going to get away from it. So um, it's, I just find it the best way to go about it. But if you're somebody that's just ease of care and you just want a super easy tank, um, just look for super low light, low demand type plants, you know, find some Anubias, find some mosses, stuff like that, that just doesn't need a ton. Um, and you still be happy. You can definitely come out with some amazing aquascapes that are basically no, uh, no maintenance, you know, no, you know, you're not adding anything that is, uh, consumable like fertilizers or anything like that. Um, and, uh, definitely go that route. Aquatic life MS says, what are you dosing on your baby? Um, uh, breast milk, you know, <laughs> you know, just the huge, right? Uh, Catherine Bryan posted a pretty cool book here that I, personally wouldn't mind flipping through if I get the chance. Handbook of Fish Diseases. Really cool. Uh, says, I got this book in 1989 on my first round in the hobby. Uh, it is edited by Herbert Axelrod. If you don't know who Herbert Axelrod is, you might want to do a little bit of work and check him out. There's even a lot of fish named after him. Uh, in addition to good pictures, there's a flow chart that gives or that goes for about 30 pages to identify fish disease. There's another section on treatment and for diehards, a section on digestion and ID. Still relevant. One of the few items I kept when I moved to Florida. This is a great book. Um, it's been a long time, but uh, you can't find like uh, the, what do you call them now? The e-version or whatever. You know what I mean? Like uh, the, the on, what is it? The electronic version? What am I, what, what's that called? I don't know can't remember i wish they would put it on a book on audio though i would definitely get in for that uh kelly peterson followed up oh yeah i like those follow-up comments always good times jake hussey my man what's up from new zealand he's the other guy other than joel uh that lives out there in new zealand you know those two dudes just running around that island out there getting weird um it says i thought i'd share a picture of this 25 inch beauty i got i recently got and I will tell you something. Uh, he says there's a red-tailed giant gourami, which 
Hey, man. That is a majestic fish. <laughs> you know, I... I'm always befuddled that, um, you know, people are actually able to healthily maintain such a large fish. I love it. Uh, a perfect example is like Brian was in the chat earlier. Uh, I don't know if he's gone now, but he has very large tanks with very large freshwater fish. I love it. You know, I'm, I'm not somebody that could personally do it myself. Um, working at some stores in the past and things like that. Uh, it was pretty cool to be able to have things like a Paku, you know, they were great. Um, I, I personally am not a huge fan of them in my fish room, but I am a huge fan of getting the opportunity to check out your awesome fish. So, um, mad props, man. That's a monster fish. <laughs> Digging it. Uh, all right. On to the next John Gonzalez, uh, says, would you consider this a red, white, and blue shrimp? Uh, put a bunch of different colored shrimp in one tank. You also get a lot of brown shrimp. Um, uh, as uh, some of the comments down here, I like the modeled coloring. Not sure see much blue, red, and white, and shine. Um, this typically, as far as the high-end shrimp keepers and stuff like that, would say that this is bad news. Like, this is kind of a bad news shrimp. But personally, I, I think if you're really enjoying the line that you're breeding, just go for it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it looks almost like this cherry shrimp is mixed with a really or something you know what i mean like it it's kind of a weird looking shrimp but if, as far as like the grading would go grading would be very low but if you're growing what you want to grow that's kind of the whole thing you know what i mean because that's what it's all about that's what this hobby is all about if you want to um healthily maintain uh if you want to healthy healthily maintain fish that um that you're looking for, then just keep doing it. If you're doing, if you're doing what you want to do, just keep doing it. As long as you're keeping the things healthy and stuff. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, L flower one stars. Can a mono shrimp go with betas? Yes. Yes. I've never had a problem with them. The a, a mono shrimps are so big. The betas can't do anything to them. Uh, I mean, it doesn't mean that there isn't somebody out there that has a story, but, uh, I've had a mono shrimps with betas, sorry, betas, right? Somebody's going to yell at me because I'm saying it wrong. Uh, but betas, but the beta fish, I've never had a problem. Never had a problem. Uh, even if somebody out there has a horror story, I'm just recounting my experience. So take that with a grain of salt, you know, but I've never had a problem. Let's see, John Gonzalez with the quick follow-up. Another one, best picture you could get. I think I need a real camera. I bet you're right. Um, I, I, To be honest with you, I, I love working with um, better and better gear. It's just, I'm a bit of a gearhead, and I'm, I'm definitely loving it, um, how things are going, and it's working out pretty, 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 pretty well so far. So um, I'm pretty stoked. Uh, I would definitely recommend getting a camera. You don't have to actually spend that much nowadays. You can actually get a crop sensor, uh, DSLR, or even a mirrorless camera for a reasonable price these days. Um, you know, although there's a lot to be said with just adding some lenses to a decent cell phone. Uh, you can add, you can get some of those um, addition lenses to your cell phone that can get some macro photography get in there and take the pictures of the shrimp and it's probably something you already have in your pocket and i think you know 100 150 bucks or something like that is all all the investment so uh, i mean if i was somebody that didn't want to make the investment i think that might be a reasonable point of entry for people to be like oh 150 bucks i'm definitely going to get um some cool shots of my hobby stuff and not be have all this crazy equipment lying around like i do like, I, I literally have, check this out. I literally have a mixer. Whoops. Is it plugged in? I think so. Uh, I literally have a mixer right here so that I can record multiple points of audio at a regu uh, on, on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm a total gearhead, and I'm trying to build up my ability to do um, the productions and stuff. That's That's one of the big things that I'm working on. I want to be able to shoot. I want to be able to turn some portions, uh, some portion of my channel into more like, 
I don't want to say like a Discovery Channel type thing, but more like a Netflix show along those lines. I want to be somewhere in there uh, as the channel continues to grow. So that that's what I'm building towards. That's what I'm I'll always just trying to get that little edge of equipment and stuff like that is to be able to shoot some things like that. And it's definitely coming along because of people like John and people like Mike Howie that have been supporting on the Patreon. And, you know, I appreciate it. I really do. Hold on. My other computer started making noises. We have to silence. We have to silence the other computer. It's doing something. Okay. Shh, shh, shh. It kind of works on my baby the same way. If I'm like, shh, 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 shh. It works on her and the other computer, right? <laughs> All right, M. Howie 9, Mike Howie, Mike Howe. I always say his name wrong. I say Howie because I'm excitable, and, you know, that's just, yeah, I don't know. I'm weird. So he's got his larval culture system and his rotifier culture going. And, dude, as he says here, we finally had to hatch. The larvae are too small to take a picture without a microscope. The picture above is of the larval system and the rotifier culture. Uh, I will provide another update once I have the fish through settlement and they look like baby fish. Man, I'm excited for this. Um, I'm almost always like... I'm super jealous of people that are spawning saltwater stuff because spawning saltwater stuff is much more difficult than freshwater things just as a generalization. Like, don't... Oh my God, somebody else is here again. There's nothing like running away from the live stream to get people to like sign out, <laughs> right? Uh, but as I was saying, as a generalization, um, you know, breeding saltwater fish is so much more difficult than 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 freshwater. Obviously, it's a huge generalization, and I don't want anybody to get super mad and and have uh, real you know arguments back and forth. You know, let's just calm it down. But I am always like super jealous when I see people uh, that have dedicated t uh, that have enough time dedicated to be able to do the saltwater fish. It's whew, man, it's super cool and mad props, Mike. You know, you got he's got kids, he's got a job, he's got obligations, he's got all that stuff, and he's breeding clownfish. Man, I'm like, <laughs> dude, that's awesome. He's got a fish barn also. Ah, oh, built that thing, man. It's like the Ener Energizer Bunny. Oh, man, Famous Jones. What's up, my guy? Good to see Famous Jones. What's up, dude? Got to meet at the Aquatic Experience. Good to see you. Uh, Dominique Nadeau. Oh. Hi, plant connoisseurs. Quick question. I'm wondering, uh, what are those bright green growth that are more stringy growing inside my Java moss? They do not look like Java moss at all, but they are kind of difficult to remove by hand. Um Typically, that's going to be a string algae. <laughs> Realistic. What is going on? Hey, man. Okay, so the postman is just hanging out in his van out there, and it's freaking out Biddy. Uh, uh, anyhow. Uh, it does look like, um, it does just look like you have a little bit of algae going on, uh, as pretty typical as far as, um, you know, Java moss, if you have like too much light on it, almost always will grow some hair algae in it mixed in and it is a nightmare to get it out. Uh, maybe that's what's going on. I would think from the picture, 
I guess the picture's not super high def. And uh, as I highlighted right here, that's the the Fundulo Punchux Gardneri. Gardneri. <laughs> Those awesome killifish. These are the same killifish that I have. So I can't. Oh, no, I clicked on it. Oops. Uh, I screwed up during the show. A little out of it. You guys get it. Um, if I click on the picture, it takes us to the <laughs> wrong size screen. Uh, but. Yeah, it just looks like you got a little bit of algae going on in there. Not not a big deal. As far as Java Moss goes, uh, I would just calm it down. But if we're looking at this like really light green that's right in here, that's going to be Rikia fluvitans. I'm probably saying that wrong, and someone's going to be like, dude, you're wrong, buddy. <laughs> but it looks like Rikia. Um, I would... Definitely get it out of there. I would just cut it out with some scaping scissors. I would just trim it all out. This bright green stuff that's in here um, looks like rikia, and it will just always it will keep growing in there like that forever unless you cut it out. So you're just gonna have to trim it down until you get it all out. Uh, but it just looks like you got rikia mixed in there, and that's not uncommon. Let's see. Susan for SLC Aquatics says, uh, congratulations. Prayers for uh, Victoria and the baby girl. Papa, hang in there. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you and your beautiful family. Well, thank you, Susan. If you guys don't know who Susan from SLC Aquatics is, um, she is like the the patron mother of uh, the fish fam. Love her very much. Love her. Little, her she has a lot of cool live streams, some short videos and stuff like that. Uh, check those out any point in time. That's one of the people I, I patronize personally. I'm a patronizer of that, of her personally. Johan S. always giving us some awesome fish of the week. Uh, even on this exciting and memorable day, a fish of the week. And I'm going to say this wrong. Monodactylus sebe, often referred to as the sebes. Um, the African moony is a species of moony Mooney fish, native to fresh, brackish, and marine waters from the eastern Atlantic, ranging from the Canary Islands uh, down to Angola. It inhabits mangrove swamps and estuaries and can occasionally be found in lagoons. This species can reach a length of 25 centimeters, a.k.a. 10 inches. Uh, and they are beautiful, and I have loved them for a really long time, and I have never had a setup that can handle these fish. Someday I have, will have a gigantic brackish mangrove tank. When will that be? I don't know. But I would definitely love it. Um, I love these fish. This is, one, this is one of the fish that he's posted up that not only is amazing, but I love this fish. Uh, very exciting. And this is a cool picture, man. Pfft. As always, like, Johan and Jake have, like, awesome fish and... I dig it, man. You guys have definitely dedicated a lot of space to doing some really cool big fish, and, and I appreciate that. I appreciate people doing that. Uh, Renee Owens says, could we have the link, uh, have the Joel link for the coop sale again, please? Oh, awesome. Yeah, man, if you guys uh, are going through there, that's awesome. It's a great way to support. Uh, you guys get a good deal, and, and uh, you know, it lets Corey know, hey, the Oceaneers like to go to aquarium co-op and i like to go to aquarium co-op and I, I realized the other day um if you guys don't know who uh flynn's fish forum brendan flynn he's got a youtube channel i like it he's awesome he's like up north in vancouver canada he drives down quite a bit to the aquarium co-op and uh, i realized like he's at the aquarium co-op more often than i am <laughs> He's like, he's like 16, um, and he's at the co-op the co more often than I am, which is, I thought was awesome. But I realized that, like, there's a lot of people out there that really like that store. They really like that stuff, and I, I love it. Bracken says, what are we breeding? Uh, we were breeding uh, humans. <laughs> we was breeding humans. That's the spawn. We spawned our baby, our baby daughter. Whoa. This chair sucks. I got to get rid of this chair. I'm going to build a chair and make a video out of it. And um, a lot of people will be mad that I posted a video that doesn't have anything to do with fish onto YouTube. But that's okay. Bra, 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 bra. Bra, bra. 
a big sponsor of the Pi Day around here, uh, Bribert Jackson. Congratulations on the newest member of your family and the Fish Fam. Hope everyone is doing well. Oh, thank you very much. Everybody's doing fantastically. Everybody's doing great. Uh, Candy just posted Flynn's channel link in the chat there, so if you're looking for Flynn, go check him out. Uh, he's just one of the young Fish Fam. Love that guy. He's doing great work. I think I patronize him, too. I like patronizing the, and helping other people out, too. I like that. I have, like, 15 people on there and patronizing. I love it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things. Like, we're crowdsourcing the stuff that we're not able to do on our own, you know. Uh, as you guys know, I've been trying real hard. I know Corey talked about it in his live stream or somebody else's live stream or somebody's video. I, I'm not sure. Somebody posted it. Um, he really, um, you know, Corey was talking about trying to, um, trying to team up with some, some bigger, big companies that, um, you know, that do spend a ton of money on advertising and stuff like that and trying to get some cooler projects to people, um, like you, like me, like every, like everybody that wants to be doing some of these big projects and how are we going to fund them and stuff like that. And, uh, thank the Lord for you guys, because we've been able to be doing this show, uh, here, and uh, being able to do this stuff as we're as we're moving forward, uh, and I'm trying to pass it on as much as I can too. So uh, a lot of people are are definitely make my short list that um, I'm going to hopefully drag kicking and screaming into the world of uh, bigger bigger productions in the future. And I, I just want to keep I just want to keep going, man. I just want to keep going. All right, uh, Steve Horton has a similar question to the question earlier that we had, and I don't want to screw this up, and they're actually the answers down here are pretty much <laughs> right on par of what he was asking. But uh, So he's after some ridiculous KH and GH levels a while back. I've now gotten my tank to respectable levels of KH, GH, and pH, <clears throat> uh, nitrates, ammonia, and nitrite. This was after I had uh, a really high KH and a really crazy high GH. I believe it did this over a month. The only thing I've really noticed is that I'm getting a bit more algae growing over a week's time, and my pH creeps up a bit, and I don't know why. Uh, you know, I, I, would always, <clears throat> I would always bear in mind that plants and algae are almost in the exact same, like, growing requirement zone. I, I don't know. I don't know how really to explain it. But if... um. If we have the right, if we have the correct fertilizers and things going for plants, they're going to outcompete the algae. It's sort of like the algae would be sort of the uh, not Cinderella, but Cinderella's like terrible sisters <laughs> of plants, right? So if uh, if Cinderella wins the 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 prince and the the castle and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this, the other two sisters just get the brush off and they, they just say, get out of here. That's pretty much the deal with plants and algae is like, if plants are winning, algae is going to lose. And that's just kind of the easy way to look at it. Um, and as, as you drop your GH, your KH and your pH into kind of a better growing zone, it does leave an opportunity as the plants try to accommodate those changes right so plants need to adapt to the different water conditions and stuff like that so you do have to walk it back um slowly but surely and uh yes you will have some kind of algae flare-ups and things like that um you know admittedly if i had that kind of water i probably would pre-filter all of my water before i even um was doing anything with it luckily i don't have to because my water out here is just pretty stellar um, so I don't really have to do that, but I definitely would if mine was coming in all crazy hot like that. Uh, famous Jones, my guy, he definitely, uh, posted up here, just purchased these baby emerald green quarries at my local aquarium society. It has been a long time since I've had green Corydoras. Uh, I really hope to again someday and these look awesome. So pff, mad props and, it, you know, I, I'll give you a free pass for being a Jets fan. I get it. They're your local, so it's all good. No hard feelings. Love it. Um, I know <laughs> uh, mass, aqua mass, mass Aquariums, what did I do? Mike, he's going to send me a, uh, a onesie, a Pat's onesie for my for my new daughter, um, which I think is hilarious. And I'll have to figure out something interesting to do with that. But uh, 
props to supporting your local. You got to support your local. You got to have your team and then just support them. Don't get, but don't get nutty. Don't get weird. Don't like light fires or nothing. Don't do, don't do nothing crazy like that. But uh, I love to see that. Kelly Peterson for our last Oceaneer post of the day. A photo of my very first cherry shrimplet in honor of the new baby girl. And I, where is the baby shrimplet? Oh, right there. <clears throat> Oh, that's a baby male. You got yourself a baby male cherry shrimp. Loving it. Thank you. Thank you for posting. Thank you for supporting. And thanks for being awesome, you guys. Um, kind of winding down here. I've got a 152 people watching. I got to remind everybody to hit the like button, I guess. I got to remind people to hit the notification bell. For whatever reason, we have to do that now. And it just kind of is what it is. I'm sorry. But we have to hit the like button and the, the bell button and all that nonsense. And I hate talking about it. But it is what it is. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. I want to thank everybody for being awesome. Except for that one guy who just couldn't help but tell us how much he's very enthralled by the president. <laughs> Weirdo. Um, uh, David... Gilkison says, how can you tell that it is male? Uh, coloring and body shape. That is a male. <laughs> I've, just, I've been around shrimp for so long, I can just tell. Uh, Daniel Gonshack says, I'm selling magenta and gold mystery snails on eBay. I guess if somebody's looking for that, check it out. I guess. I don't buy things on eBay anymore because I'm kind of freaked out by it, personally. I just don't trust it. Um, Kiwi Mamo says, what plants will thrive at four feet? Uh, four feet deep or four feet tall? Or uh, I don't understand the question. Um, there aren't that many plants that are going to grow four feet tall. Uh, you will have to look for some long grasses and stuff like that if you actually want to just grow them all the way up to four feet. Um, there just aren't that many that, that do that without the base of them just getting so gnarly that it kind of looks gross. Um Rick Fair, have you ever raised fry using the mythical infusoria on purpose? Yes. Uh, I used to grow infusoria on the windowsill. And these little shallow tanks that I would set up uh, on the windowsill and grow infusoria when the uh, sun was good. When the sun was strong. And the sun was fierce. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me get some, try to get some questions. <laughs> Benjamin P says, wow, YouTube does weird things to that emoji, not the face that I wanted. <laughs> oh, understandable. Uh, KG Tropicals just threw a giant comment in here, and I missed it. What's up, John? I'm going to blow, if anybody has stayed this late, where did it go? I thought it was like just a second ago, but clearly I just talk so much. Uh, but we got a super chat from Valerie Van Zyl with no question on it. Well, thank you. you thanks for chipping in. It's all good. Uh, where did it go? I thought John was asking something. Oh, there we go. Hey, Joel, took your advice and took Lisa's filter apart and replaced the polishing pads and cleaned the other sponges, and the tank cleared right up. Thanks for the advice. <laughs> and rest in peace, Stan Lee. Yeah, um... I'm glad we could figure that out for you. I'm glad I could help you, like, kind of decipher what the heck was going on there. And, um, yeah, I'm glad that I could be of assistance. And I'm glad to hear that it got sorted out. So that's always good. Uh, and rest in peace, Stanley. Yes, I will agree. Rest in peace, Stanley. The guy had a magnificent run, though. Uh, I think anybody would be super stoked if you said, boy, howdy, you're going to live till you're 95 and be as energetic and creative and uh, productful as that guy was. I think anybody would sign up for that at any given point in time. Uh, he will surely be missed, uh, but, I mean, you can't have much of an expectation more than 95 years. I mean, come on, that's that's a great run, right? Um Andy's Aquatics. Hey, man, my beta has dropsy, I believe. I'm giving him daily salt baths. Anything else you can recommend to do? Uh, salt baths is going to be going to be kind of basically the best thing that you can do for him. Um, dropsy is generally that internal disease. Something is happening internally, and uh, you basically use the salt baths in order to draw out the extra um, 
you're drawing out the extra fluids and things that are within their body to kind of get them back to where they need to be at. Um, but good food, make sure you're taking care of them, good water quality and doing those salt baths and stuff. It's pretty much the best thing that you can do. It's just kind of a nightmare when you get dropsy. It just really is just kind of a nightmare. Carson's asking, how's the new studio going? It's not going great because Carson hasn't come down here to help me. So uh, it's just going to be a work in progress. It's going to take some time. <laughs> but we're definitely going to get there. Um, I hear uh, people rattling around in the back of the house here, so I need to get going. Um, Rogue Aquariums kicked in a uh, three ninety nine super chat. I don't know when that came in, like last week, I think, uh, for some reason. It's here, but Darren, we'll see you soon, brother. Uh, Richard, uh, Lucy and Richard, thank you very much. Ginger Graves, Brian's Fish Tanks. Oh my God! Special appearance right at the end. Ooh. It's our beautiful baby. It's our baby girl. Sleeping. Sleeping. She's just napping. She's just napping, you guys. Oh, she's like always napping. Uh, she's great. Um, yeah. Well, now my baby's here, so I gotta go. I gotta go do other stuff. Sorry, guys. She, she takes precedence over you, over you guys, every day of forever. That's just how it goes. Sorry. Uh, Brian's Fish Tanks, thank you very much. Chad Crotz, M. Howie 9, Sunia, Valerie Van Zyle, Jamie McDonald, James Nisham. Thank you guys for all your super chats. I, I love it. Um, have a good time out there. Uh, if you're still in dire needs for more live streaming tonight, uh, I believe Bob Steenfot is live tonight. And uh, don't forget... Jeff Rose, Jeff Rose is going to be live tonight in uh, an hour and five minutes or something like that. Always check out uh, Jeff Rose if you like, give a chance, hit him with the subscribes or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, my baby is here and I got to go. Uh, and David Gilk, Gilkison, your last name is so hard to say. <laughs> um, thank you very much for the super chat, baby. I like it. Um. But everybody have a fun night out there. Don't get too too crazy. Uh, don't light off any fireworks. Don't go doing any burnouts in the middle of an uncontrolled intersection. Because I've seen people doing that recently and it kind of freaked me out. Don't do that. Take your hot rod to the track, bruh. All right. Later. CJ, where'd you hide that 